My my runners, when I coached two years down in North Carolina back in 2010 and 11, just for fun, and they they made T-shirts and had T-shirts made that said on the back, "I run under the influence of Jack Daniels." <laughs> they were really popular. Yeah, that... everybody wanted to buy one. Yeah. Trying to run too hard. Trying to run too hard. Or too much. Too much. I, I like to think that as a beginner, your first goal ought to be to where you can handle about 30 miles or 30 minutes, about 30 minutes of running a week or a day. Yeah. Each each time you run. If this is a much of a, the benefit of a 10 minute run a day, and this is the benefit of a 30 minute run a day, and this is the benefit of a 60 minute run a day. You get more for your money on 30. Yeah. In other words, on the other hand, certainly there's nothing wrong with going for a 10 minute run. The problem is you spend more time showering and changing clothes than you do yeah. running. You might. So I like to think, you ought to think in terms of a 30 minute run kind of being the starting point. You hate to see the doping stuff having, uh, number one, it seems like one of the things they could do is if somebody's caught doping, they're done lifetime ban instead of a two-year ban or whatever they give them a heck with it. Because why do so many people continue to do it if they know that getting caught is going to eliminate them? It, it doesn't make any sense. The, number one, it doesn't make any sense that we're not catching them. <laughs> it, I mean, boy, it's, it's really, it's a difficult thing. You know, my, my sport of modern pentathlon was the first Olympic sport to be tested for drugs. For alcohol, they tested because people used to get drunk to do the shooting event, so they didn't shake as much. But then you get around to the what legal medication, meditation, medications that people have to take for different problems, and maybe those boost performance. You know, and so you, you, are you saying now that people with this particular medical condition can't be athletes because what they have to take to live? Makes them illegal. Yeah, that's a, it's a tough one. Definitely. My favorite part of visiting Canada. Yeah. Well, I worked for Sport Canada for four yeah. years okay. back in the 70s, and uh, so I used to spend every summer for about three or four months in Ottawa. And so to me, that's my best memories of Canada have been in Ottawa because I used to train there, and I used to coach there, and I used to do research there. Yeah. Oh, what is the name of that place? The Arboretum? Yeah, yeah, I think where they got some cows out there. Yeah, the Experimental Farm. Right yeah, the Experimental downtown. Farm. That's, yeah. I used to live right near there, my nice. apartment. And that's where I used to run almost all the time, was in the, or, or down the Rideau Canal. When I was going there, my full-time job in the U.S. was at the University of Texas. I was the women's coach, cross-country and track coach, and I taught exercise science at UT Austin. So I would go to work there usually mid-September and get off in mid-May and then go to Ottawa in mid-May and stay there till end of August. So I was only there always in beautiful weather. Yeah. I, I, I can't remember if I used to get there in time for the Tulip Festival that you had there. In the spring, yeah. That was big. Yeah.